Hello, I'm Molly, and this is Care Experts, brought to you by Care Credit and Pets Best. Together, the Care Credit Credit Card and Pets Best Pet Health Insurance provide all the financial tools that can help you be the best pet parent you can be. Today, we are here in Los Angeles, California with Dr. Jeff Werber. Dr. Werber is a practicing veterinarian and has been for over 35 years. He is the founder of Century Veterinary Group and is the former president of the Association of Veterinary Communicators. Your dog's eye health is very important and oftentimes something that can go overlooked or unnoticed. So Dr. Werber, today, if you can help us understand a little bit more about our dog's eye health, um, what is one of the most common problems with eye health in dogs? I, I'd say probably the most common problem is some form of what we call conjunctivitis, just an inflammation of the area around the eyes. Um, also, we see a lot of corneal ulcers, which we can talk about, but I'd say overall, conjunctivitis wins. Well, so let's talk about conjunctivitis. Um, what are some of the symptoms, possible treatments? So conjunctivitis, basically, anytime you see ITIS, itis, uh, that means inflammation of. So the inflammation of the conjunctiva, which is the tissue surrounding the eye in the eye socket. Um, we have the, the palpebral membranes, we have the conjunctiva, we have the sclera, things like that. So um, anything that might irritate that, it could be infection. It could be allergy. It could be an irritation. Uh, we'll see the eyes getting very red. We'll mm -hmm. see some tearing. We might even see some discharge. Mm -hmm. um, any of those things usually constitutes a conjunctivitis. It also could be a manifestation of an upper respiratory infection. And what are some of the treatments for conjunctivitis? You know, it really depends on what the source is, if we can even determine the source. Right. So typically, we're going to want to use some um, ophthalmic solution or ophthalmic ointment, um, which one really depends on other factors. Uh, because one of the causes could be a corneal erosion or corneal irritation, which is causing the irritation, which is leading to the junctivitis, we don't want to use anything with corticosteroids. Okay. So we might be stuck with having to use just an antibacterial solution or an antibacterial ointment. And an issue, an eye issue, you know, are there, is there any issue that will go away on its own, or when do I need to take my dog into the vet? Well, again, let's go back to the ADR. If the dog is doing totally fine otherwise, he is doing right. Yeah. Uh, then, um, and the discharge maybe just a little redness, but the dog's not pawing at it, dog's still acting totally fine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be bothering your, the dog that much. Right. And you want to give it a day or two, that's fine color discharge, if there's mm -hmm. severe redness or inflammation, if the dog is rubbing at the eyes, if it looks bad enough to be irritating the dog, it's bad enough to see your vet. And like you said, don't mess around with eye don't issues. Don't mess around with eyes. I understand. Um, so could my dog pass something like that on to another dog or a person? I usually tell people that if your dog has pink eye and you do take the doggy, uh, like a doggy daycare, I would hesitate to recommend doing it until the veterinarian has seen and started treating the eye. Okay, so if you are going to hold off on the vet for a couple days to see what, how it goes, maybe keep your dog isolated Correct. from other Just to make dogs. sure it's not anything contagious. Um, what are the signs of corneal ulcers in dogs? You're going to notice a dog, first of all, you'll see a conjunctivitis. Usually the eye is red, very irritated. But the first thing that you'll notice as a pet parent, squinting. Blepharous spasm. The dog is going like this because it, it hurts. Ah, uh, okay. So when you see a dog that, and, and also, what, did it just come in from playing outside? Was it just bathed? Look at the history. Right. What is the likelihood that it's a corneal ulcer? But if you see a dog squinting, exhibiting pain, definitely, definitely need to see your veterinarian as soon as possible. And what could be the cause of a corneal ulcer and how serious? When a dog is a snout, like a collie or, or, or a shepherd, if, if they touch something that could be irritating the eye, it gives them an opportunity to close their eyes. Uh. But when they have that short face breed and they touch it almost the same time it touches their eyes, right. it's a little too late to blink. Not enough so, space. To protection. So, yeah. so that, that's one. Another one, oftentimes, it's bathing. Uh, getting soap in the eyes and not rinsing it. Well, the soap itself is usually not a problem. It's mm -hmm. not rinsing afterwards. Then the dog rubbing the eye afterwards because the eyes weren't rinsed well. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to start rubbing and create, create an ulcer. Okay. And um, can dogs get cataracts? And is it similar to human cataracts? Cataract is a is a, a milky discharge debris within the eye lens itself. Mm -hmm. It becomes very obvious. It looks almost like a marble mm -hmm. inside the eye. And these dogs are really becoming blind. 
And the key to cataract is early, early diagnosis. Thank you so much, Dr. Werber. And we'll be back with more care experts after this brief message. Thanks to Care Credit, I can take care of my best friend. Thanks to Care Credit, I can smile again. Thanks to Care Credit, I can be confident. Thanks to Care Credit, I can prepare for veterinary care. I can take care of myself again. I can be myself again. I can plan for Cooper's care. I can take care of my pug family. I can. I can. I can. I can have peace of mind. Welcome back to Care Experts. Let's continue our discussion with Dr. Werber. You know, how do you differentiate between cataracts and just a cloudy eye? You know, how do you make that difference? So that is, that's why we see our veterinarians, mm -hmm. and, and even there are specialists in veterinarians called veterinary ophthalmologists. Mm -hmm. uh, cataract surgery is usually done by a veterinary ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. But diagnosis, uh, there are a number of ways to tell. Um, we can do what's called um, a, a, an ocular fundic exam. Mm -hmm. And that is using a special device that we can see through the lens to the back of the eye. Oh, wow. You can also look for what's called a PLR, pupillary light reflex. So a dog's age does play, or does have a factor in whether they're getting cataracts or not? Or can a young dog get cataracts? A young dog can get cataracts, especially the young dog has, has diabetes. Um, are there treatment options for dogs with cataracts? And what are they? Uh, the, the only real treatment option is surgery. So you mentioned diabetes and the relation to cataracts. So um, can you just talk a little bit about that relationship more? And so if my dog has diabetes, would I be on the lookout for cataracts to diagnose early? Definitely. If, if your dog has diabetes, diagnose with diabetes. And again, the way we tell is very, very, very abnormally high blood sugar. Uh -huh. And that sugar going in the bloodstream acts as a, as a, as a wick. And so we get more of this fluid buildup in these cataracts uh -huh. and blood in the, in the lenses, and it turns into, you know, cataractus lens. So uh, that there is a, a big link between cataracts. So if I see a dog drinking a lot of water, urinating a lot, and developing cataracts, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking diabetes number one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are some signs that um, my dog might be going blind? What would I look for for my dog to... Tell you know, you know I, I've tried the, the eye charts. It just doesn't work. I can't get them to read that E. <laughs> I just, I, I've worked on it. But so typically it's the dog that seems to be bumping into things, um, making a turn around a corner. And I said, so people ask me, what's the best vision test? I said, the best vision test is to take a, a hallway and put a chair here and a garbage can there and a box there and call your dog on the other end and see, does he manipulate through? Um, what are some signs that a dog might have glaucoma? So glaucoma, a very, very painful, very painful condition. Mm. Um, the, the signs, again, will be squinting. And if you look at the bulb itself, the eye bulb itself, it is very large, larger than normal. And again, if you are a seasoned pet parent and you've touched, gently touched eyelids and pushed on the eyeball, dogs with glaucoma have very, very hard. Their pressures, instead of being 15 or under, are 50 and 60. Now, what are some treatment options for glaucoma? For glaucoma, there are many. Uh, there, there are eye drops. There are some oral medications that seem to reduce ocular pressure. Uh, in, in advanced cases, there are some f techniques that a veterinary ophthalmologist can do. Um, can, now, can dogs have eye allergies? Is that something, and what are the symptoms? The, the symptoms of allergy, and certain allergies can affect the eyes through, as we discussed earlier, just conjunctivitis. You'll see some excess, excessive tearing. You might see what we call injected sclera. That's the white part of the eye. And it becomes very, very red. You can see all the blood vessels coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, so those might be signs of, of an allergic manifestation mm. uh, of some sort of allergy. Um, so one more question on just eye issues. I've heard of dogs getting cherry eye, okay. and I wondered if you could explain this to us. Or that's talk a about good it. one. Yeah, the the emergency that's not an emergency. All right, a cherry eye. They call it that because it is actually a prolapsed gland of the third eyelid. The third eyelid is called the nictitans. That's if you just gently press on a dog's eye, you'll see that eyelid from the middle come up and cover the eye. Yes. There's a gland inside, and it's the tissue in there is very much like a tonsil tissue. It's very reactive mm. to what we don't always know. So when that gland pops out, it looks like there's a cherry on the inside. So cherry eye, prolapsed gland of the third eyelid is not an emergency. Uh, it needs to be seen. It often, uh, it can be 
responsive to medications. Are there any supplements for the eyes or anything you would recommend to prevent an eye issue? I would just keep the eyes clean. If there is a little bit of a discharge in the morning, uh, you might want to wipe, wipe it away, see if it comes back. If it's continuous, you want to see your vet. Uh, but I would not recommend just you know buying some over-the-counter tear replacer and, and, and taking, you know, taking it to your own hands. You really need to have the professional uh, look at the eyes. Absolutely. So when in doubt, go to your vet. Absolutely. But keep an eye on the eyes. Keep an eye on the eyes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Warburg. Thanks for watching. All of our featured care experts recommend and accept the Care Credit credit card, which is accepted at hundreds of thousands of provider locations nationwide. And Pets Best offers comprehensive pet insurance plans that can cover up to 90% of your pet's unexpected eligible veterinary expenses. Together, Pets Best and the Care Credit credit card can allow you to provide a lifetime of care for your four-legged family member. Visit carecredit.com for more information.